Hi everyone, I am Ekansh and uh, we would be discussing about Convoy Gateway, an in-depth guide to its benefits, use cases and uh, features. Uh, I forgot the title, sorry. <laughs> okay, um, with me, uh, Shivanshu was supposed to be here, but US visa issues, so he's not. <laughs> Apart from that, um, welcome everyone, and I just wanted to know uh, how many of you have heard about Envoy Gateway or used Envoy Gateway? A lot. Okay, so the other half of the room, what do you use? Anyone? Okay, not a problem. Uh, so let's start with this Envoy Gateway introduction. So with this, we have introduction to Envoy Gateway. The agenda is here with architecture overview. We have a demo by Shivanchu. I'll play a recording about eight to 10 minutes. And then we can have uh, a discussion on its features and what, how extensible uh, Envoy Gateway is. So what is Envoy Gateway? So Envoy Gateway is a gateway which manages all the, just a minute, it's slightly confusing. <clears throat> yeah. So what is Envoy Gateway? Envoy Gateway is a gateway which is uh, actually managing Envoy proxies. So it is a native gateway for Envoys. Uh, it is an XDS control play which will dynamically manage all the fleet of Envoys wherever, however, how many ever you have uh, in the cluster. Uh, it provides a batteries included, uh, I would say, experience for Envoy proxy. Whenever you install Envoy proxies, uh, whenever you work with Envoy proxies, always their Envoy gateway is natively supported and we can call it as, as a wrapper on Envoy proxies. Uh, Batteries included is one of the most famous phrases for Envoy Gateway. It provides an extensible support to a multitude of application, gateway use cases and everything. And why would we use Envoy Gateway uh, over any other gateway? So it satisfies most of the common use cases for any of the gateway uh, purposes. So I would say it, I, it's not a full-fledged service mesh application, but yes, it will support all the other use cases, all common use cases like traffic routing and uh, management. Apart from that, it is very performant, high efficiency, high performance. It's very extensible. We can have rules, we can have filters, we can attach other uh, proxies as well. It, we have dynamic configurations for Envoy. It's very secure and we have support for all the protocols are available, UDP, TLS, HTTP, and uh, what else do we have, gRPC. And it has a seamless integration with all the service meshes and all the other orchestration platforms. So this is a basic introduction to Envoy Gateway. Now let's start with the architecture overview. So we have an Envoy Gateway which listens to the static configuration and dynamic configurations, and it manages all the fleet of Envoy proxies that are there in your cluster. So a traffic request is coming in to the gateway. It will redirect it to the proxy, and the proxy will then manage all the traffic and send it to your user application, wherever it is. Uh, a high-level overview of this particular diagram. We have a provider at the bottom. Uh, the provider listens to all the static configuration and the dynamic configuration that I have told earlier. Then it uh, goes to all the translators. The translator splits it up to the infra IR and the XDS IR. And uh, this is done to provide, uh, like if you have a Kubernetes uh, resource, it will have a uh, Kubernetes listener. If you have a file resource, probably uh, in the future, it will have a, a file listener. And uh, for this part, we have split it into two parts because we can have control over public facing APIs and we can have control over all the other internal APIs. Also, uh, we all know that whenever we make a gateway resource, uh, Envoy proxy is uh, a new Envoy proxy instance is already up and running. So we can have a numerous Envoy proxies 
with different configurations running and which is being managed by a single Envoy gateway. Uh, so n number of gateway resource managed by single Envoy gateway. So a little bit of extensions. So we can have a lot of extensions to Envoy gateway natively supported. Here we have an example of uh, an OAuth 2 filter extension, which is uh, connected to our Envoy gateway right now. Coming to a slight demo, we will continue with the features after that demo. It's, uh, it's, the demo is talking about HTTP routing and uh, it's uh, like traffic management and everything. And then we will continue with all the filters and rules. Uh, thanks for coming uh, today, and let's get started with the demo. So there are multiple exciting features in Envoy Gateway, and let's see a couple of them in action. So yeah, can we increase the volume? Can we increase the volume? Thank you, Akash, and uh, hi, everyone. This is Shivan Shu. Uh, thanks for coming uh, today, and let's get started with the demo. So there are multiple exciting features in Envoy Gateway, and let's see a couple of them in action. We'll start with HTTP routing. So we need to create a gateway class which uses a Envoy Proxy Gateway Controller, and then we need to create a gateway which uh, references the gateway class and exposes a listener. So here we are exposing an HTTP listener on port 80, and then we can configure multiple HTTP routes uh, which uh, references to different backend services and attached to uh, the given gateway. Here we are attaching it to the example gateway. So to see this particular example in action, I have created uh, so I've created a multiple four clusters, and everything is set up in uh, two, three, and four clusters. And let's set up everything from scratch in the first cluster. So first of all, we need to install the Envoy gateway itself. For that, I just need to run this helm install command, which is pretty straightforward. And while it's creating, uh, installing Envoy Gateway, uh, let me show you the routes that I'm going to configure. So this is the gateway class. This is the gateway with, uh, with the listener. And then I'm configuring three HTTP routes with uh, different services. So this route is using hostname example.com and is exposing example service on port 8080. Similarly, uh, this route is uh, using hostname foo.example.com with path prefix slash login and exposing foo service on port 8080. Another service is bar service. And if the header is canary, the request goes to bar canary service. And if the header, if there's no header, uh, the request goes to bar service itself. So let's see if everything is installed. Um, uh, so NY gateway is installed. And let's check if the CREs are installed. Uh, the required series like the routes, uh, gateway class, and uh, uh, my proxy, patch policies, everything is installed. So let's go back to deploy our sample applications. And uh, let's also deploy the, OK, I need to be in the right folder. Uh, deploy the applications and deploy the route itself. Let's see if the routes are created. All the three routes are created. Now, uh, OK, we are using Minikube cluster, which means the there's no external IP for the load balancer service. So I need to start the Minikube tunnel so that I can uh, get a local IP address for the, for the external IP for my load balancer services. Now that the IP is assigned, I can start sending the traffic. So let me first send the traffic to uh, with with host example.com and let's see. Okay. I need to give the password. Cool. And the request is served by the example backend, which is expected because my rules says if the host name is example.com, the request is served by example service. If I send a request with header with hostname foo.example.com, uh, 
and with path prefix slash login, the request should come from foo service, which is correct. But if I remove the path prefix from here, the request should not be served because there is no rule defined for foo service uh, if there is no path prefix. So this is again working. And if I send the request with the host header with host uh, bar example dot com without any extra header, the request is coming from bar backend. And if I send the request with the canary header, the request should come from the canary deployment. And this is expected because I have added the header match rule here. So, so in summary, it's just as easy as creating the HTTP routes and configure them properly. Uh, so that you reference the right uh, backend services and define the right tools. Similarly, we can have request and response header uh, injected to take a look at this example. Let me switch to another cluster. Uh, the second cluster has everything pre-configured so that we can save some time. We have the N1 gateway and uh, all the routes configured. So if I go back to the examples, all right, so here I'm just uh, uh, creating a filter which adds a foo header. Now, if I send the request, but before sending the request, we again need to tunnel the traffic for Minikube so that it has the public the external IP. Okay, now let me again send the request, but in the second cluster where everything is configured with HTTP routing, and uh, header injection is enabled. So I see the foo header is there. In my request, I am sending something, but the foo is coming from the injection. So it's again as easy as applying a filter in the, your HTTP routes. The third example that we are taking today is JOT authentication. To configure JOT authentication, we need to create security policies which attach to a specific HTTP route, and then we can have the JOT URI configured. For that, let me go back to terminal and switch to my third uh, cluster. And uh, again, tunnel the traffic to get the public IP for my gateway. Let's check if we have the public IP. Public as in external IP, yeah. Okay, so for the JOT authentication, the rules that I'm configuring, the idea is to create a security policy, and that security policy is attaching to a given uh, STP route, and then there we can define the exact JOT URI JOT token. Um, so I have two uh, routes, one is foo and one is bar, and both are sending traffic to the backend service with slash foo and slash bar uh, path prefix, but the security policy is configured only for the foo HTTP route, which means if I send the traffic with slash foo, I should provide token, otherwise the request would be rejected. And if I'm sending the traffic to slash bar, and it's okay, the token is not required. So let's first try to see if the token is there. Okay, the token is exported. If I send the request to foo without the token, the it should get unauthorized access. Yeah, and 401 means it's unauthorized, but if I send the traffic to bar, since there is no security policy, it should get owned okay. Now, if I again send the traffic, but with the token, uh, the bearer token is in the header, it should be uh, owned okay. So uh, in summary, we can configure the authentication. It's just we need to define a security policy, which attests to given uh, STP route. In, in, in theory, like any, uh, any route, it could be a gRPC route also. Uh, but gRPC does not use JOT, so for STP it makes sense. Um, now, the last thing for today is uh, rate limiting. So if we use, uh, so for, for configuring rate limiting, all we need to do is configure this backend traffic policy. Uh, the backend traffic policy is again attaching a given uh, route, uh, and we need to configure the rate limiting with uh, the given uh, request limits and headers. So here. I'm configuring the rate limit uh, with limit three requests per hour, and the header is X user ID. So it means if this particular header is present, then only the limiting bit would work. Now let's go back to terminal and switch to 
थर्ड सॉरी फोर्थ क्लस्टर एंड लेट्स स्टार्ट द टनलिंग सो हियर ऑल्सो एवरी थिंग इज प्री सेटअप आई हैव ऑल्सो दिस रेडस डिप्लॉयमेंट टू कैश द रेट लिमिटिंग टू एनेबल द ग्लोबल रेट लिमिटिंग इन एनवाय एंड कैश द the values in redis so the gateway class is configured and uh, all we need to do is uh, first step is having the redis instance ready and then configuring the envoy gateway to use that redis in instance and then we need to define the backend traffic policy so in this given backend traffic policy uh, as i said earlier i'm just uh, depending if the header is present i'm requesting i'm limiting the request to 3 per hour So let's try to send the traffic first uh, without the header, uh, and it's all two hundred okay. And if we send the traffic with header, I'm expecting only three requests to get accepted because uh, uh, because the backend traffic policy says only three requests per hour. So if I send uh, four requests in just two se uh, two seconds, only three should get accepted. Let's see. Yeah, so the fourth one is denied, and because it says x limit rate limit, and uh, it's rate limited true. So configuring rate limiting is very easy. Just you need to create a backend traffic policy, attach it to the STP route, and uh, configure your rate limiting uh, in the rate limiting part. So I think yeah, that's it for the demo. I would hand over to Akash to take fall from here. Thank you. so we saw http routing uh, header manipulation jot authentication and rate limiting now we come back to cross origin resource sharing so for cross origin resource sharing we are attaching a security kind to our envoy gateway here we uh, do some filtering over headers and methods if we have x header 1 or x header 2 in this demo then the traffic will be routed to the service otherwise it will be not so this is about cross origin resource sharing going to grpc routing so grpc routing is uh, uh, recently supported and it is very similar to http routing we can see here the service is being handled by the port 9000 and uh, it is mm, it is not a lot different from http routing comes uh, coming to http redirects here we are using some rules and filters Uh, on the basis of our status code in this demo, uh, the, if the status code is 301, the whole traffic will be redirected to port 443 of the hostname example.com of the service. Uh, we can also have a multi-cluster service routing. So, in multi-cluster service routing, we are exposing the multi-cluster service API of the of Kubernetes, where we can do an export of service A from cluster A and import it into uh, cluster B of service B. So, here, if we can see that we have uh, make a rule, we have made a rule to HTTP route, where we are uh, using the backend service of cluster A on port uh, 3000 with the uh, the routing to our cluster B. next we will do a http route request mirroring uh, a request mirroring is nothing a request will come in it will, it can go to uh, two backend services so let's just say we have one request which is coming in and it will be served to port 8080 probably and then we have made a new rule which will serve it to 3000 as well so a new service uh, next we have http route traffic splitting so we can do a traffic splitting on the basis of uh, some rules or filters uh, in this part we have uh, done we have made a rule that every traffic will be filtered on the basis of like uh, 50% of traffic will go to port 3000 of service of backend 1 and 50% uh, of traffic will go to uh, port 3000 of backend 2 so we can do uh, traffic splitting as well this is the most uh, exciting part for me so proxy observability in 0.6.0 release of uh, envoy gateway we have proxy on, uh, observability as well uh, we can have uh, envoy access logs and we can look into metrics traces on grafana loki so we can have a lot of observability on uh, proxy 
uh, our Envoy proxies, and it was not available before. Uh, so it's very exciting for me right now. Uh, so that's the end of the presentation. We have a couple of minutes, I think. Uh, do we have any questions? Yeah, so uh, if I am not giving weights to anything, so the splitting will be done on 50-50. If, if I maintain weights, like 90-10 or something like that, then it will do a split on that basis. Sorry? I have no idea. I am very sorry, we can get back to you on that. I need to check on the docs. So the split is based on weights and round robin what balancing is, uh, by default, it's 80, each request. Um, yeah, so you can also consider round robin when balancing as well. It's a different kind, uh, it's a different type of uh, splitting, right? So this is weight based? Correct. So, um, yeah, it's, I think uh, each locality will get Yeah, so he told the answer. I, I did not have an answer for round robin. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Yeah. Okay. Uh, could you, so could you quickly repeat the question? Sorry to say. Sorry? Could you repeat the question? Okay, quickly sure. So, everybody can hear so uh, can you tell me your name? Okay. Yeah. So Dave here asked why are we using uh, Envoy Gateway over any other like Istio or uh, some other gateway, right? Yeah. So my answer would be that one, uh, I prefer I use Envoy Gateway over Istio because uh, I am not a very big organization where I have to have a whole service mesh configured. I can have just a gateway and the traffic routing or splitting and that will get my work done. It is very lightweight, it is very extensible and it is uh, actually supporting all the major protocols that I am using. So UDP, TLS and gRPC if I am using and HTTP. Uh, apart from that, uh, it is like batteries included. It is uh, a wrap, we can say it is a wrapper over Envoy proxies, we can like manage all our Envoy proxies with one single Envoy gateway. So I would say because of lightweight, if I have to go with this whole service mesh, I will go with this too. Yeah? Yeah, that way. Yeah. For Redis? Yeah. So Redis was being used for rate limiting, rate limiting right? Yeah, how the Envoy communicated to the Redis as well. Okay, I can, okay, so you want to know the configuration? Like how we are maintaining that uh, config? Uh, so majorly, I also used Lua only, but uh, I think we have an ATS support to Redis now. Uh, but uh, if we have, like, if you want to discuss, we can discuss this afterwards as well. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Now, this might be a silly question, but what is the difference between using Envoy Gateway versus Envoy, which also uses the Envoy proxy? Uh, so I would say. Uh, I would like to reiterate my part about the wrapper part of Envoy Gateway. So Envoy Gateway is very lightweight and we can consider it as a wrapper over Envoy proxy. So it's a very uh, natural connection to Envoy Gateway. Uh, 
uh, all the envoy proxies. So on Quantor or as they mentioned Istio, I will have to have another set of configurations for envoy proxies or sidecars. So that is why I would use envoy gateway, but uh, if the use case is more nuanced or more extended, then I would use something else. Okay. So is Contour just like a, another type of graph? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but envoy gateway is natively supported and that is why I would use envoy gateway. I can't speak to any individual project, but I know a lot of the folks who've built these kind of things are working together, and, and there has been talk of a lot of these projects rebasing essentially onto Envoy Gateway as like a sort of commodity layer eventually. Now, obviously, you know, I can't speak for any company or any other project's roadmap, but that's definitely been discussed, right? The, the similarities. Okay. Yes, please. As much as I know, yes. Yeah, there's a resource type where you can essentially punch through the abstraction and give Envoy configuration direct. Stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe stay tuned. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.